first question. Okay, uh, Chair Boyd, um, your first question now, man. Um, were you a were you a an art patron already before you you became galleries? Art patron, the sense that I was collecting ever since I was in high school, yes. But uh, aside from that, I have been really much into the arts uh, because of the early influences I've had in my life, you know, uh, the family, etc. So that continues until now. I collect art and I I support art in uh, many ways uh, uh, than one. I support young artists and uh, I continue to be in the art scene here and, uh, and abroad. Yeah. So if that can be called patronage of art, then I am a patron of art. What made you decide to become a gallerist in the Ultramont? There was no plan. Uh, actually, uh, my brother who has uh, placed a reservation in this place, you know, in this space, uh -huh. told me one day that uh, he cannot uh, support this, so he asked me if I want to do it, and I just, uh, I just did it, you know, I mean, it was really very providential, I did not uh, have any plans, I did not think about it, and uh, initially I was thinking of putting up a pastry shop, mm -hmm. right after mm -hmm. coming from, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lunot uh -huh. in, uh, in Paris, in Plaisir. So there was no plan. There was no plan. So how, how come he didn't take it? And he, he well, uh, the primary consideration was really finances because okay. this is a pretty expensive location. Okay. And I said maybe I should try because after all, I want to. I have been, as I said, no, I have been a lot of art, uh -huh. and I thought maybe it would not be a bad uh, idea. Uh -huh. you know, so. I just took it. You um, already had a uh, gallery, Anna, then? My brother, yes. Uh -huh. My brother, who I have been uh, advising here and there, you know. When he asked me about opening up a gallery, I was very adamant mm -hmm. joining him, you know, mm -hmm. in, in tandem with him, and I was adamant. And I don't know what happened when uh, he said that there is this space, and I, when I came to see it, I said, okay, why not? Why were you adamant about it? Because I have no experience about uh, art management, about uh, running a gallery. I was a banker all my life, you know, so I, although I have passion for the art, it's more for collecting, it's for, more for uh, participating in uh, art activities and art promotions in, in Europe in particular, you know, so. Uh, that was the only background I have. Nothing. I don't know the art uh, scene much in the Philippines at the time. So and even until now, maybe <laughs> I have a very vague idea of what goes on in the, the art circles here. How did you go about it uh, during the first year? Well, I mean, uh, there was no uh, what they call this tangible plans. Uh -huh. Everything just happened, you know, and I was just telling myself I will have to rely on my taste and I will have to rely on my uh, little financial uh, independence because it really needs a lot of money to start a gallery and that's it. Wala akong ano, I mean everything was so nebulous. What about the buyers? Well, I'm in contact because I've been most of the time away from the country. I've been, I have been away for so long, and at the time I was just coming back, uh, you know, sporadically, not really uh, something that I do regularly at the time, you know. So, but that was already a stage in my life where I was more or less thinking of coming back to the country until all these other things uh, uh, occurred, you know. I mean, about uh, having my my little preoccupations, business preoccupations outside the country. So, yeah, I, I, I am now uh, basically uh, taking time to, to be here and taking time to be in, uh, well, abroad.
what was the first artwork that you really got to sell during your first year? When, okay, the first, first one was a work by Gabby Barreto because he was part of the original uh, group because there was a group show. And I was happy that uh, Gabby Barreto lent me one work of his, and that was one of the first that uh, got sold. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a sculpture, you know. It's uh, the usual kinetic sculpture that he does, you know. So people came to you instead of you calling them to come to you? Right? There was really no effort from me <laughs> to really ask these people to come. Uh, Although, uh, silently, I was trying to uh, contact people I know before. But ano lang eh, it just happened. Uh, they came to see the place. Plus, plus, of course, this place is quite uh, uh, known to you know the more or less comfortable people uh, in Manila. So that probably helped also. But uh, walang walang talagang conscious constant effort to get these people around. Uh, but what I just did was to really uh, present. Well, hopefully, good shows, you know, at the time, and uh, trying to as much as possible take away the clutter, establish what my artistic philosophy is. Mm -hmm. But of course, it took a lot of time because it's not really easy. Because uh, I have uh, not that much uh, connection with the artists. Uh, it all happened uh, sporadically, little by little, and. Uh, until we reach this level of, uh, uh, I can call it, honome or, or uh, being known in the community, you know, after almost six years now. It will be six years in, in, uh, in June, or May, sorry. Yeah. Did you ever think you were, you were going to fail uh, in, in that first year? I was ready. Because uh, I know that, uh, especially gallery business is uh, is stuff. It's uh, you know your success is not really spelled or uh, defined by your financial uh, results. It is uh, of course the two you have to really reckon very well because you know it, 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 gallery business is. Uh, it's a very unique business proposal or business uh, model where you have a uh, uh, financial consideration and at the same time uh, trying to come out with something philosophical and cultural as a gallerist. So uh, you have to really wait through that, you know. And uh, that was the only guiding thing that uh, the guiding thought, if, I, if you can call it that way, that helped me through it. Wala pong ano, wala pong formula. I just uh, thought maybe. Uh, the best, the best idea is to just uh, select uh, uh, the, the the kind of artists uh -huh. that you have to present. I must even, I wasn't even thinking about uh, how people will view us. You know, uh, are we going to be edgy? Are we going to be too artsy? Are we going to be uh, serving only the old, uh, you know, the 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 more solid collectors. Ang daming, ang daming, ang daming mga variables. Kasi, even sa collectors, uh, iba-ibang persuasions yan eh. Ganon din sa mga artists, you know. So, what I thought, you know, the guiding spirit was, okay, I'll try to, based on how I see, based on my taste, I will select the artist that I believe uh, do or does uh, fine art or good art. Because uh, even that is very, very relative, you know. So somehow we succeeded because, you know, if you look at the history of art, especially in the big galleries, there are big, big galleries that uh, in, in the United States, in Europe, who made uh, some history, but they lasted only for five years, some, some of them two years, you know. Uh, but they're in history books because they, they did some good, uh, Good shows that are now history, you know, like uh, for instance that guy uh, Irving Bloom. I remember uh, the, the the gallery um, only lasted for less than five years, 
and uh, but they were able to get uh, big artists uh, showing in this gallery and uh, he was also able to get in uh, to the gallery the kinds of uh, war hall and there was an occasion at least uh, he did not totally uh, got bankrupt because after uh, in 1971, there was this series of uh, Kansu by, Gal by, by Warhol that was shown in Freros, I think, it was the, it was the gallery, Freros, and then uh, uh, that, that uh, series was not so, you know, I mean, uh, and uh, he took uh, title to it, and in 1996, he was able to sell it to MoMA for 15 million, when it was only bought for $1,000, so there, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, gallery, gallery management is fun and it can also be a source of this, this comfort, especially when you see that uh, the, the finances are not uh, doing well. But, I, but you've been doing well, right? See? Well, uh, we have our nose above the, above the water. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's such a... Since the second year of you? We did. There are ups and downs. Because in Kenya, naman talaga ang gallery. There will be, there will be, how should I say now? Shows to sell. There will be shows that will not. But uh, uh, yeah, we were we, we were able to refine it as we go along, and uh, people started trusting us, uh, both collectors and buyers and artists. Uh, and that's very important because you know those are the critical elements in running a. Running a gallery, it's always the artist. You know, the artist has to be recognized, and then uh, a gallery manager or a gallerist should be able to really discern uh, how he can influence taste. Also, he's got that uh, that potential uh, uh, possibility to you know to, to mold taste, and, uh, and some people have done that, and. I'm not consciously trying to do that, but uh, hopefully we will set some kind of uh, trend in the future. Only because you have no choice. Yeah, also, because if you want to be recognized and known, you really have to be uh, doing things that matters, you know, uh, particularly as far as the artist is concerned, as far as the collectors are concerned. As far as the cultural uh, setup, uh, where you find the, you know, the situation uh, of the gallery, yeah. Let's talk more about the aesthetic philosophy. Um, what is to you? Uh, well, you would put it like uh, the art that you like. Yes. What is what is that art that you like? What is that art that you don't like? Okay. It's a very tough question to answer because you know, as I said, uh, art is very relative. Although. I am basically, uh, you know, I, I am very conservative. I'm very conservative, but uh, conservative should also so should also be again defined. You know how, how conservative conservative you can get because uh, conservative in the sense that I like uh, you know the, the Florentine Renaissance period. I like also the Baroque, uh, the figurative. But uh, I'm also not alien to you know the moderns. You know. But uh, I'm able to follow uh, the trends and the movements, you know. Uh, and what is important for me is the intellectual context at which all these kind of arts are being presented, you know. So uh, because it shapes uh, not only it shapes society in that sense, and anything that uh, that will shape, you know, uh, society and will absorb it into. That, uh, so they say now into uh, the conventional way of looking things in a particular society. So that, that matters. You know. so, so, if you were going to use three adjectives to describe the kind, the type of work that are shown at the Mondo, well, what adjectives would you use? Okay, uh, it must be relevant. It must be beautiful. They must be intelligent. Those are the three adjectives. Like, um, see, of course, it, it has its formalities and all this, uh, you know, element of fun, you know. 
because uh, in a contemporary context, it can be fun, it can be provocative, it can be ironic, it can be appalling. But if they can do it and present it in a way that will convince, you know, that will uh, make people think, you know, whether it's going to be poo-pooed or uh, you know disdained uh, by some elements of uh, or some viewers, it doesn't matter. What's important is it, it moves you know, uh, certain people. It makes them think, it makes them contest, it makes them uh, satirize, uh, whatever. That's, that's art. It's, it's uh, how should I say now? It's uh, the aspirations of humanity. It's not just uh, uh, art being straightforwardly figurative or, or uh, expressionist or whatever. And all of that can have contributed to what we consider as serious, what we consider as good, what we consider as beautiful. You yeah. used to be a, an art reviewer, right? I still do. I still do. I, I uh, continue to be in a very, well, especially movie reviewer, initially. I have always been uh, immersed into, into art. Always. You contributed to yeah. the newspaper? Before, long, long time ago, when I was still in college, uh, very much so. Uh, so every now and then you're doing art review? Not so much. Now, now only uh, from time to time I, I make some commentaries on Facebook and on some works that we, we, we do here in, uh, in the gallery. And also, yeah, some people that I know uh, basically I, I put in a little, a little commentary, but not, not anything, you know, uh, uh, first to the artist. It's uh, if I like, uh, I, I try to be as positive as I can. You know. It's very difficult to displease uh, artists in the Philippines <laughs> because it's not the we don't we don't have that kind of uh, sensibility to be to be criticized or to be you know even if it's uh, constructive. But pinches, uh, and they will look at it as an affront, you know. So, yeah, the anthropological setup is different. Yeah. Your relationship with the artists that are that the show in your gallery. Um, yes. What are the terms that you enter? What are the terms that? The, the arrangement. That was usually. Um, well, we follow standard practice in, in the industry, you know, where we share. Uh, we, we, we accept uh, normally the, the, the norms, you know, the agreed 50-50 uh, sharing. And uh, we carry also, we, we take responsibilities for, uh, you know, marketing and then also press, etc. The usual thing, and then we take care of the or the cocktails, and then uh, depends when when the artist uh, has very little financial capability to support the artwork we exhibited. We also I from time to time uh, support uh, provide extend some financial assistance. So oh, yeah, we do materials. That. Yes, I have gone into selecting young. Or men and even mentoring young artists, and then we have uh, yeah we have invested uh, to a certain extent uh, for you know mentoring them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what do you mean mentoring? We we for instance uh, sought uh, assistance from curators or from uh, from artists themselves mm -hmm. to help out in determining your, uh, I mean, improving, augmenting your scale of uh, artist, and then introduce them to basic, uh, you know, art history, you know, uh, all things that, are, that we think are relevant to putting them in the proper and right perspective as far as art making is concerned. So, you know, and uh, we have also, yeah, continuously. Until now, we continuously uh, stay in touch. I monitor your development and I tell them if they're okay already or not, etc. And 
I have been so far quite lucky because, uh, yeah, I, I, I believe I have a little eye for good art. So I try to maximize that. And uh, yeah, people, naman, uh, especially the young artists, they're, they're easily uh, molded. You know? And what I always inculcate is to be always professional. Stay within your commitments. Uh, never uh, yeah, feel, feel you feel the hunger of uh, trying to make out something from uh, from their artistic uh, desires, creativity. You know, that's very very important. You you will have to be hungry, so that you, you you thirst for more. And when you're doing that, you you try to. Not you try, but you, you come out with something even better, something more convincing, something more impactful. But you've also avoided uh, signing, uh, getting them to sign contracts? Yeah, I do not believe in signing people to contracts because uh, for me, uh, what, what's more important is having the respect. Mm -hmm. And that's where also I gauge the professionalism of the artist. Because uh, you put them in a in a kind of contract, uh, it sort of, it's being selfish because let's face it, an artist cannot be forever continuously under your weight, you know. He has to seek uh, better and greener pastures also. And that will present, uh, whether you like it or not, either with you or some other galleries. But it should be a laissez-faire thing, you know, a laissez-faire relationship uh, with a lot of respect for each other. For me, that's the most important thing that counts, the respect, and that also measures up to the professional sense and level of uh, that person. Yeah. Let's go back to your shows. Um, what were the, the most controversial shows that you've ever done? I don't remember any of it. I don't want to be controversial. I, I cannot. I probably... In, in my, there was a time, and of course there was, uh, I don't remember anyone, but it was a group of UP guys. Uh -huh. And uh, they, 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 they did some, uh, should I say, now? Uh, uh, I don't remember anyone the, the title, but it's a group, it's a group of uh, UP graduates. They were, of course, uh, trying to come out with a show that uh, really satirizes, criticizes certain personalities uh, in the society. That was probably, I think, during the second or third uh, year of our existence. You know. but, uh, I don't find it too controversial, you know, because, uh, yeah, you were more or less very subtle, very sober. Well, you're, you're, you're quite the jet-setter, aren't you? Uh, oh my God. Have you ever, have you ever um, thought about, um, you, have, you have it in your hands to bring Filipino artists to countries where they could, they could be exposed? It's always been a thought, but you know, I have not, I've talked to some people that are already established in me. And uh, I have received cold shoulders, but you know, I mean, some people, they should, <laughs> they should realize that I have also some good connections support, you know, particularly some foundations, art foundations, like, like uh, uh, Fondation Rica, uh, Fondation Cartier, and I could bring them, but it seems like they don't take took me seriously. Uh, I have offered it to some uh, some guys that I know, but you know, I don't want to push myself. Uh, so, but that's a thought, always. Uh, and hopefully, those that we're trying to mentor now, when the moment that they get to the level of uh, celebrity or notoriety, I should be able to bring them together uh, in, in some big institutions in Berlin, in Paris, or in but isn't it the, the, the gallerist's job to create that? Yeah, we do that. We do that. In fact, uh, we
we try, we have done already, uh, we've come to go to uh, art, art fairs, we have uh, started doing that. I'm starting already to, uh, starting to talk uh, with uh, uh, international galleries. But you know, uh, it's, uh, it's probably too soon to do that because uh, we may probably not have yet that kind of, uh, I don't want to use the word maturity, but uh, notoriety or celebrity, because uh, um, the, the artists that I believe can do that already are not, you know, are not within our, uh, how should I say that, it's not without Romondo, you know. And to approach them, mga nakasoga yan eh, mga nakakoral na yan sa ibang galleries. It's not very easy. You know, we're a young gallery and I wish meron na kami na-develop na someone who will feel the likes of Ventura or Benka, but you know, it's always a long process. It's not overnight. But hopefully, uh, even outside the even outside the realm of Ultramondo, we should be able to generate that kind of, uh, of uh, interest from other artists you know, to to represent themselves. In uh, walang panyan, walang kung personal agenda. Uh, the only thing that I want is to get the Filipinos uh, known. Road. Yeah. That's the new, no, that's the desire. There is the desire really to, to help promote because after all, wala na ako ano eh, wala na ako ibang purpose kundi one day hopefully I can discover, I can I can create, uh, not create, but I can I can uh, uh, come out with an artist that will be internationally known. You know, that's the that's the wish. If I succeed, I'll be very get, uh, thankful. If it doesn't, if it doesn't happen, I will be just as happy because I went through the effort and I'll be richer with experience. Yeah, but uh, you're married to a French citizen. Yes. You could choose to settle in France instead yes. of here. You studied in France. Yes. Why here? Why? What did you choose to face? Okay. Uh, in uh, in Europe, it's really a tall order to establish uh, a gallery there. It's very, how should I say now? Um, first, it's very expensive. Number two, uh, there are already a lot of established galleries. And the truth is, right now, in Europe, uh, they're not, uh, they're not, selling that well, you know. I mean, I'm talking about the uh, the usual galleries, not the big, big galleries, but uh, the middle galleries to, to, to you know, the small galleries. If you start there, you start uh, from square A, you know. So, it's, it's a taller order than here, because here it's more contained, the market is more defined. Uh, there, you have a bigger opportunity to be working with big artists also, but uh, uh, the economic situation in Europe uh, plays a major consideration. You know. And it's not easy in the sense that uh, more or less controlled you can have that any Tom, Dick and Harry can set up a gallery there. Uh, controlled by who? Well, there is some kind of an art mafia there also. I don't want to use uh, any, any, any race or whatever, but you know probably what I mean, you know. Uh, there are really uh, groups that uh, control practically you, you flow and trading of art. particular segment of, of uh, the economy. It's true in the Philippines, uh, but it's true also in other countries. Uh, so we may, may question that, uh, uh, you know, you were asking me again, you know, you were asking me again, you know, you were asking me again, you know, are you, 
yung, yung perspective mo on, on the state of the yeah, as, as a final word. It's burgeoning. It's uh, you have a lot of good artists in the country, and there are good galleries coming out now. I mean, uh, that's already an advantage. Because, many uh, talaga na Filipino artists, and they're getting a lot of exposures uh, internationally. And I hope that continues because uh, there is really a big uh, potential, in, you know, Filipino art because. Basically, we're one of the best in the region. I mean, uh, uh, if not the best, you know. So I, I think that will sustain itself. Shaka hindi pa tayo ganon kamahal. Marami tayong mga galing na artists, both conceptually and traditional art. And uh, I hope uh, that stays the course. You know, wala ko masabi na hindi mali. It's just a question of time. And it is started already with the likes of Ventura, with the likes of uh, uh, the name of Gentleman, uh, but it's Jacob Cruz, uh, the international following of the artists. But when, what needs to be improved? What needs to be improved? Still a lot, but it's getting there. Your maturity, first and foremost. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Certain concepts that uh, I believe uh, needed to be uh, more looked into. Uh, your international uh, content, in the words, you know, it's coming, it's coming. It's not yet that pronounced, but uh, it's becoming a little more and more evident. Because as, as they grow, uh, as, they, as they get more, uh, uh, should I say now, as they get more uh, exposed, they get a lot of uh, ideas, theories, etc. And uh, they, they really improve. You know. Mal Malaking improvement in the last uh, five years, I've seen that. Yeah. But what about you? Do you see yourself uh, becoming a, uh, an international gallerist, at least in the Asia region, in the near future? Oh, mamma mia, that's too high an ambition. You know, with my age, I don't know. But uh, I just let things happen. Hopefully it happens, but uh, uh, that's a tall order, to be very honest. So you're not looking forward to it? I can if I want to, but you know, uh, I have good enough connection. I have, uh, but mahira pag isip lang ganyan, because you know, uh, maraming, <laughs> maraming kang susuwagin, maraming kang, Gaga away and I don't know if I, you know, gave it my age, I must be able to do it. I hope I can. I hope I can. And, uh, I have that consciously in my head, you know. Altamondo uh, is going to stay for how many more years, do you think? I cannot say. For so long as uh, we have the support of people, but, you know, to be very honest, another 10 years, hopefully, because of the time. Although, Marian Goodman is 84 years old. If I reach that age, why not? You know. And there are so many other, you know, big, big uh, galleries that uh, are able to stay the course. Well, I know, there are big ones that are at a very young age. There are the likes of uh, Maria Goodwin, who at 84 is still very, very, very active. You know, even the Guggenheim at the time, uh, she was very active. So, it's all a question of, but yung, ano sa art, yung, yung passion for the art will always be there. Because it's something that, you know, I cannot take away from it. It's like, it's a kind of virus that I have had uh, already a long, long time. It's, you know, malice, you know. Is there something you'd like to say that uh, I, I wasn't able to ask? Uh, uh, I would just like to, you know, sustain your, keep hanging in our uh, gallery space, uh, what, what we think and what we believe is not art. We will try to be more artsy, hopefully, and more experimental. So we will get into some edgy arts as we go uh, along. And of course, you need to progress in your career. You cannot stay always uh, behind uh, you know, the trends. Uh, we observe that quietly. And hopefully, you will be able to 
Brighton tayo. 